What's up, guys? Today's podcast is brought to you by Audiophile Inc. At Audiophile Inc., you're going to be able to get the garments that you like. T-shirts? Check. Hooded sweatshirts? Check. Tank tops? Got them. Underpants? Nailed it. Whatever. Get whatever you want. Screen printed with the designs you want. On the brands you want. It's all about what you want. It's not about me. It's about the consumer. And here's the deal. If you're a consumer and you've got an idea that you just absolutely have to put on a t-shirt or somewhere else, you got to go to audiophileinc.com. Tell them Sean sent you. You're going to get the best price in town no matter what town you live in because Audiophile Inc., while located in Louisville, Kentucky, will ship to all 50 states. You got it, guys. Bazinga. They're going to ship to all 50 states. So, Go to audiophileinc.com, place your order right now, A-U-D-I-O-P-H-I-L-E-I-N-K.com, audiophileinc.com. Also got a brand new website that they're working on, guys, so be patient. Hit, hit them up. There's a phone number right there. So if you can't get in on the website, just hit them up with a phone number. You want to ask for Shane. Anyway, guys, thank you so much to Joe Brock also for booping these dials. You really are the glue that holds this podcast together, the glue that holds the microphone into my hand. I forgot to mention your name uh, last week, and I felt like a total bozo. So Joe, bro, uh, I'm no longer a bozo. Shout out to you, dude. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, guys, if you like what you hear, please like, share, and subscribe. Five star meow meow beans rating. That's all I'm asking for. It was my birthday uh, on Cinco de Mayo, so what a great birthday present! Just a nice five star review, and uh, maybe something that says like, "Hey, good podcast" or whatever. Cool. One word review will do just fine, guys. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe. I'm on YouTube, Facebook. Yeah, YouTube now. So subscribe on YouTube. It, tube. Subscribe on YouTube if you like uh, listening to your podcast there. Um, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Get at me, Sean versus Wild at gmail.com, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's going to be enough for me because you're already going to hear a lot from me in the next few minutes. So uh, strap in, put your tape decks on record, uh, throw on your Discman headphones, uh, fire up your Rio MP3 player, and let's get wild. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sean vs. Wild podcast. I'm your host, but you probably heard this in the intro. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm also uh, your guest. I'm going to be your guest. I'll be your guest. I'm the man. I'm the myth. The Sean Thriller Smith. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for putting up with me, singing a little Disney right off the top, right off the bat here. <laughs> Going to hit you with some Disney. Uh, guys, uh, it's been a big week for me because um, Friday was Cinco de Mayo. Who doesn't love Cinco de Mayo? Who doesn't love uh, you know, getting a discounted margarita? But on 5-5, I turned 31 years old. So um, happy birthday <laughs> to me, I guess. Um, it's kind of a big... Kind of a big day for me, turning 31, um, the, and so I decided to celebrate uh, by doing a podcast that was strictly uh, me as a, as a guest, me talking to me about me. That sounds really like selfish and self-centered, right? Oh, well. Uh, it's my birthday. I'll do what I want, guys. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, the reason why I wanted to do this episode, well, for one, having a podcast that was just me uh, was actually the idea for the very first episode of the Sean versus Wild podcast. Um, I've probably attempted to do this podcast uh, to do uh, a conversation that was just me, you know, talking into a microphone. I probably attempted to to do it about a thousand times. No joke. There's probably a thousand entries into my old uh, uh, Tascam DR40 uh, of me starting off and I probably took like 15 takes before I got this one. So hopefully this is the last one. Uh, but man, you just get nervous. You just get uh, kind of psyched out. But I knew that I had to do it this time. I knew that I had to do it here for my birthday, even if I had some some mistakes uh, uh, earlier on here in the day. I'm learning, learning all the time. But I know that now, today, um, I know that I'm in a position where I'm I'm comfortable and I can, I can, I can do this. I can do this. You know, it may be a little rocky, but you know, that's life. 
that's life for you. But yeah, I know that here I am 19 episodes into uh, the Sean vs. Wild podcast. Uh, I think I finally feel comfortable enough to express myself uh, accurately, hopefully, and um, in a somewhat intelligent manner uh, for you guys to enjoy it. So yeah, here goes. Uh, <laughs> here goes nothing, guys. Jeez. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, it's my 31st birthday, and uh, the reason why I wanted to kind of do this podcast is because it was last year, uh, on my 30th birthday, that I decided that I wanted to pursue podcasting. Uh, I had just done a podcast to just kind of give you some history and some backstory here. Let me take you back one year into the past. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm about to turn 30 years old. And um, everything I own uh, resides in a single bedroom in a friend of mine's uh, house that I'm renting. Um, and uh, I'm just kind of all, and I'm not sure where I'm going to go with my life, you know. I'm just kind of all confused. I'm turning 30, man. Like, who wants to turn 30? If you've already turned 30, you know it's not a big deal. But um, at 29, it, it kind of is a big deal. I think 30 is a, a lot of times where people kind of set a goal. Or kind of people have in mind, like, you know, at 30 years old, this is when I'll have my life together. This is when I'll have the family. This is when I'll have the kids, the wife, the husband, the the cars, the, you know, I'll have some sort of social status. I'll be mature. I'll have some sort of maturity status. Um, I will tell you, for me, um, not really. <laughs> not really at all. Uh, just kind of the same old uh, goofy kid. Um, but now... 30 years old. Uh, anyway, so at that time, uh, I was playing drums in Uh Huh Baby Yeah, and we had had some success years previously, like, uh, you know, doing Warp Tour and in and, and 2013 and 14 and meeting people and using those contacts and playing some big shows and, and getting tours and things like that. And But over, you know, the course of, I would say, the year before that, like things just really started um, slowing down. We had a lot of kind of paperwork and back and forth with the record label that we were on, uh, trying to release some recordings that, you know, by that time we're already a couple years old and uh, we had we had still tried to to get get this released. Um, and I mean, not that there was I don't want to speak ill of like the band or the label or anything like that. I mean, just that's how life is. That's just how things go. Um Sometimes uh, it doesn't work. Life doesn't uh, work according to your timeline, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> so, um, but I will say that it just slowed our momentum down uh, almost to a, to a standstill. And by the time that the album eventually came out, um, you know, it it didn't really do anything at all, um, as opposed to like previous albums where we were able to sell ten thousand plus copies or whatever, which isn't a lot uh, in the grand scheme of selling albums, I guess, but it's a lot for some kids that don't really have a lot of education coming out of a small town in Indiana or, you know, just trying to make our way out there grinding, you know. Anyway, but the momentum had stopped by that point or slowed down dramatically. Um, we did do a successful tour with uh, Assuming We Survive, and um, that was that was great. That was a highlight. Uh, oh, and Reckless Serenade. God, I love those guys. Uh, they're in a new band called Moonwalker. Some of those dudes are in a new band called Moonwalker. I'm going to have to get them on the show. Uh, I'm going to have to get you guys on the show. Mark, the shark, you heard me. Um, uh, but anyway, so we had we just got off that tour. Um, but uh, after that, like momentum was slow. And and um, I knew that there was something that I had to do, something else that I had to do. Or not something else, but more like I had to have a backup plan or a second plan or a second option. Uh, in case, in case the stress uh, uh, of of standing still uh, was too much for for us to bear, so a couple months uh, before uh, my birthday, I was I was I did a podcast, and I can't remember if the band was asked to do the podcast or if just I was asked to do the podcast. But in a nutshell, I was the only one that did this podcast. Um, the way things just kind of work out. Like I said, life just kind of works out, not according to your timeline. <laughs> but um, I did the Never Nervous podcast, and you, you probably heard me talk about Never Nervous uh, on the show, um, part of their network. Uh, great website. If you haven't checked it out, never-nervous.com, especially if you're in Louisville, man. It's got 
it's got all the what I like to call the local haps. Uh, so you can check out the local haps stuff that's going on in Louisville. Um, but yeah, uh, great dudes. But they they uh, have a podcast, um, which you probably know about. But in case you don't, they have a podcast, and I was asked to be on it. And uh, really, that was the first time I had ever done like a one on one interview. Um, there have been plenty of interviews where I was able to speak. Um, and a lot of times I, I speak a lot. I'm pretty long winded. And if you listen to the podcast, you probably know that I, I just love talking to people. Um, but this was the first time I was able to do that, uh, as not, a, not like, uh, um, you know, giving the second or third comment. This was me, uh, being able to, to just really, uh, show myself. And, and, and it was just me. The spotlight was on me, you know? It was a small podcast stage, and the spotlight was on me. And, and honestly, I'll take it because uh, as a drummer, a lot of times, and drummers out there, you know, I just had a conversation with Emily Prather. It's just like uh, from Floods, and she was just saying, you know, with drummers, you know, you, a lot of times you're not the one that um, that does the interview. And a lot of times you're just behind the drum kit, and the drum kit's at the, you know, at the back of the stage, and you're, you know, behind three or four other people, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everybody loves, uh, you know, any drummer will tell you that they love to play, and some of them, even I, I feel like I like the privacy to a certain extent, but, you know, everybody wants to be uh, out there in the spotlight sometimes, and uh, really get to show uh, their, you know, just kind of show like their personality and show like who they are. And uh, long story short, Never Nervous was uh, doing that podcast was really just what I needed. Um, I got to go in and uh, talk with them and and really just just shoot the shit with them. Uh, It wasn't a lot about the music. It wasn't a lot about the band. It was it was about movies. It was about pop culture. It was about, you know, things that I liked as a kid and toys and, and, and just having just a genuine conversation, uh, about things that I was interested in. And then, you know, of course we did, we did, uh, you know, talk about band things. Um, but you know, I just love that. And I love that format. Uh, it just reminded me a lot of like, uh, talk shows or late night or something like that. Um, or, or you know, watching the Howard Stern show back in the day on E. It's probably too young to watch it, to be honest with you. Or Love Line is probably definitely too young to watch that. Um, but yeah, it kind of reminded me of that, where you know you can have guests on there to discuss anything, and I think that's kind of the special thing, and that's that's what I like to incorporate into my show. Is yeah, I want people to get their information in. I want people to you know discuss the projects that they're doing. Discuss what they have coming up, so that way the listeners know about it. But I'm I'm really uh, I really like giving the listeners just like an inside view uh, of uh, of you know the guests on the show, things that they like outside of music or or their personality. Let it shine, you know, let it shine out um, on the show. So I do definitely enjoy that, and that's what I got from Never Nervous. And and when I listen back to the podcast, uh, the Never Nervous podcast that I did. I just knew that there was something there. There was an ease in the conversation. Uh, a lot of times, when you give an interview, or you give uh, when you get an interview and you give an interview, uh, sometimes you might be met with some restraint on one side or another. Uh, this just flowed naturally, man. Like water, be like water, my friend. Bruce Lee said that, guys. Not me. Bruce Lee said it. But yeah, it, it was very natural flow. Um, and when I listened back, I knew that it was magic. I knew I had something there, and um, I loved it. And I had never really been familiar with the medium of podcasting before that, to be honest with you. I mean, I knew podcasting was like, you know, internet radio, uh, something like that, or an internet talk show, but I didn't know where to find podcasts. I didn't know, um, what other podcasts were out there. And that really, um, I don't know, kind of wet my appetite for, for consuming these podcasts. And after that, I mean, uh, I just, I just dove in head first, loved listening to it. Um, so that kind of brings me, you know, a couple months later, here I am turning 30, uh, kind of got some stuff going on. I'm not sure what the band's going to do. And I have this, this dream that I want to have a podcast. I want to showcase myself and I want to showcase, um, of course the main point is to showcase the guests showcase people that are out there 
doing uh doing the grind on the grind on the hustle trying to make something of themselves you know uh i like to talk to people that are famous i like to talk to people that are almost famous uh you know people that are getting there working hard and i knew that was what the theme was going to be and sean versus wild was a hashtag that i've been using on tour for years and years and years and uh, what I kind of like about, uh, if you ever watch Hot Ones where the guy eats the hot wings and stuff, that guy's name is Sean, and he recently just launched a YouTube channel called Sean in the Wild. And boy, when I saw that, I was like, oh boy, yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> but Sean versus Wild, damn it, is still uh, still a thing. Anyway, I digress. So back to uh, back to the matters at hand. Um, I'm 30 years old, turning 30, and I decide I'm going to do this. I have this dream to do this podcast. And so I make the first step. So lesson one in life, have a goal. Lesson two in life, take the first step. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that single step for me was investing some of my tax money, some of my birthday money, whatever money that I could manage to save uh, on top of that, and invest it in some elementary podcast equipment. And that's exactly what I did. I was like, if I buy it, I have, you know, I save up for it. That investment, I've earned it. I'm going to work hard to get it. And as soon as I get it, I'm going to uh, just be able to really appreciate it. And I have no excuse not to do a podcast now. I have to do it now. And boy, dude, I got it from Amazon. And I remember it was like a snowy day and it all came and I was super excited, and I opened it up, and I got my Tascam DR40, which is basically just a portable uh, recorder. And I, the idea was I got to get these interviews. If I'm on tour, if I'm on vacation, if I'm out somewhere, uh, I'm going to get the interview anytime, any place. So I bought the Tascam DR40 recorder. Um, you can plug some mics into that. So I got a couple basic Audio-Technica mics. They cost me about... I think they cost like 45, 50 bucks a piece at that time. They've since kind of gone up. I can't think of the name of them off the top of my head, but they're like a dynamic mic, which is, and they're both USB and XLR. And they have like a headphone input right there on it. So that's kind of nice because if you plug into like your computer and stuff, you don't have to worry too much about lag because you can just put the headphones directly uh, into the mic. Anyway, whatever. Um, I bought a couple of those, and then I bought a simple Yamaha mixer, which honestly I didn't really use all that much. I still don't use all that much. Um, I do record uh, my phone interviews uh, through that mixer, but it's nice to have, definitely. Um, so I got I got those things and um, didn't have any idea how to use it. Just had a dream. The dream was I'm going to make a podcast. And uh, just like many dreams, like I said, life doesn't work on our timeline. Uh, I was super stoked about it and stoked on it for, I don't know, a few weeks. And I tested it out, especially the DR40. I, it was like a handheld thing. It's, it is a handheld thing, and you can talk directly into it. Uh, it has some uh, what are called X and Y mics um, on the top. But anyway, um, you know, I, I, was, I was just messing around with it. But eventually, you know, you put it down. Uh, I never really wanted to talk into it. Uh, too much, be, especially when you know anybody was else was in the house or whatever. Because I I was just embarrassed, kind of. I don't know. I needed to get over my stage fright. Or I needed to get over my I don't know whatever I had in, going on inside. Um, but eventually, I just put it down. I put it in the closet, and it sat in the closet from probably I don't know for four or five months, honestly. And it was just kind of out of uh, I don't know, like I said, out of fear, out of. Uh, self-consciousness that, uh, you know, what you're doing wasn't good enough, uh, or you're not ready yet. Um, and like I said, I, even doing a podcast just by myself here, I, I probably had started the process a thousand times, get a few seconds in, you know, five, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe you'll get a couple minutes in, uh, but eventually you stop and, uh, you race it and you're like, I'll try it again later. Um, but those days just kind of pile up and there you go. Five months later, your gear is still in the closet and not a, a podcast. Did you record? Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how that went, uh, for months. But I decided, uh, in that time, I will say this, it was kind of valuable, 
uh, to not go ahead and jump in because I did spend that time researching podcasts. So I was already listening to them at that point, but this was listening to them from a totally different uh, stand standpoint, viewpoint. Um, this was listening to them uh, as research. So I would listen to how people talk. I listen to how people um, interview their guests. Uh, what the quality of their podcast was, what I liked about that, uh, about their podcast, what I didn't like about it. You know, for me, like if a podcast is really difficult to hear, if it's like really like low quality, like if it's done over like, um, I don't know, sometimes you can do it over like a, um, like a, a broadband connection or sometimes these Skype calls, um, it can be very quiet. Uh, if it's difficult to listen to, or it's very uneven to listen to, I find that to be, um, kind of a, 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 I will tune out at that point, you know? So if I do hear a brand new podcast, if it, if it is of that quality, I typically don't take a chance on it. Um, so I knew like I, I had to be ready to out of the gate, hit the ground running and make sure the podcast sounded, uh, decent, you know, somewhat professional quality. Um, hopefully that I, I have achieved it. I get quite a bit of, uh, positive feedback on the, how the podcast sounds. And, uh, while I wish that I could take all the credit for it, I really can't because Joe Brock helps me, has helped me since podcast number one, uh, putting the, putting the pieces together, uh, helping with editing, uh, helping with sound. He's taught me a lot too. So, you know, I know that there will be one day when I will be able to, uh, successfully do this, but I mean, he literally taught me from the ground up, um, you know, with the ins and outs of, of sound, everything I know about sound or recording, which is very little, but he, he taught me all of it and uh dude's super sharp. But anyway, so I got to thank Joe. Thank you for that. Thank you for booping those dials, Joe. I know I thank you every week, but I can't stop singing your praises, man. You, you've really, uh, you've really, uh, helped make this dream come true for me. You're my partner in crime on this one. Um, <laughs> but anyway, back to the story there. I knew that I wanted to make sure that I was uh, hit the ground running, had a professional sounding podcast. I knew that uh, I wanted to have a kind of a talk show feel, like I said, late night, Howard Stern, that type of thing. And I want people to be able to talk about, you know, every, what it is that they're doing, but hit that personal side. You know, if you want to hear an interview, you can hear an interview anywhere. But a podcast, that's the beauty of it is you can go off on a tangent and you can just say whatever you feel. Um, to a certain extent, but you can, you can be more honest, be more open and, and be free to elaborate more. I feel too, and just have a good time, you know? Um, it, you know, so I knew that I wanted to do that. And also too, I, I wanted to do podcasts that were around an hour long. That was another big, big thing of mine. I wanted it to be about an hour long and I wanted to be able to, um, record it face to face because I knew that, I didn't like podcasts that were super long. I mean, over an hour is great, but a lot of times having like a two hour podcast, I couldn't really do that. Um, I knew I wanted it to be weekly because I love, man, getting a new podcast, especially on a show that you really like on those days, being able to count on, you know, Hey, every Tuesday, this podcast that I love is coming out or every Thursday or Friday, um, being able to rely on it, man, that's a great feeling. So I knew that I wanted to do that also. I wanted my podcast to come out. I picked Tuesday just because, I don't know, I felt like Tuesday's, not a lot's going on on Tuesday. Monday, sometimes you're a little too busy at work to listen to a podcast. Tuesday, you know, it's good to go. And then if you don't catch on Tuesday, you know, you can get it on the weekend, whatever, however you want to do it. So anyway, I decided on that. And uh, yeah, and that's just kind of all the research that I had acquired um, while I wasn't recording. I was uh, listening listening uh, with with intent, you know, researching just as... You know, as a drummer, I, I listen to the, the great drummers and, uh, you know, and as just a guitarist, listening to guitarist, a painter would, would look at the art from, you know, painters. You got to do your research, see what works, see what doesn't work, find out why um, it does or it doesn't, and then be able to utilize that uh, to your own craft, you know. So, so using that... Um, at that point, that that puts me up to probably about October, um, you know, at doing all that research. And, and I would say it was the very first week of October um, that uh, it all it all changed. I was like, I have to do this. I have to do this. And that's because I 
I saw a Facebook um, status from a friend of mine named Brian Puckett. And Brian stated, you know, hey, we've got the Little Heart Records anniversary show coming up. And Little Heart Records has is a label, and I'm sure most of you out there, especially if you're local, you know about Little Heart Records. But, oh, man, they, they did everything for our career. They put a lot of careers on the map. You know, a lot of people get started, got started out there off Little Heart. Um, most, I would say most recently, like Knock Loose, you know, they, dudes helped Knock Loose and, and uh, Grey Haven and Fox Bat, who you've heard on the show. And I mean, Brian Puckett did everything he could for any band. And um, basically he, he stated that, um, you know, that the Little Heart Records anniversary show was coming up. Uh, and that he wanted to kind of hit the podcast circuit or, or, or find some press outlets and releases um, that he could promote on. And when I saw that, I was like, you know, man, Brian and has this label and and we have this history together. And, you know, I definitely want to have Brian on my show. He would be a great interview. So I had kind of made a list of people that I wanted to interview and um, I still have that list. I keep that list and I add to it and I cross some, uh, you know, wh- when I get that interview, I cross it off and, uh, you know, you just, just trying to keep track of, of, of my goals uh, here. But at the very top of that list, I put Brian Puckett. He's the first name on the list. And um, the reason why is, you know, I was like, this guy uh, has done podcasts before, had done interviews before, and but he's just helped in all these bands and, and we have this history and and yeah, like this is the this is why I need to start it. This is exactly where I need to start. A great first interview. Okay. Because me trying to interview myself just wasn't working out. Um so I reached out to him and uh I was like, you know, I I don't have any I have this gear. I want to start a podcast. That's been my dream. That's what I've been, you know, getting drunk and talking to people about uh for the past few months. And and I bought this gear and it's just sitting and and I I I'm going to start a podcast and I want I told Brian, you know, I want you to be the very first guest on the show. And he's like, oh, man, that's a great idea. Uh, I'd love to do it. Um, you know, we can talk about the Little Hearts uh, stuff that's coming up. We can talk about our, um, you know, history. Oh, baby, I getting started on Little Heart and all that good sort of thing. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, I love it. And we just made plans uh, to to talk again um, later on in the week to get something scheduled. And uh, that was on a Tuesday and I get a phone call. I get a phone call that Sunday, uh, but it wasn't from Brian. It was from uh, Kevin. Uh, and Kevin said that Brian has passed away. And he had passed away um, due to some complications. I mean, he he had a lot of medical issues going on and um, has had 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 medical issues as far as I know, since he was born, he was born with a little heart. Um, that's that's where the that's where the record label's name came from. But uh, anyway, he he passed away. He's in his mid thirties, and people say that they didn't expect him. A lot of doctors, professionals, stated that they didn't expect him originally to to even live that long. So um, I would say that Brian lived a very fulfilled life, at least. He fulfilled the lives of everybody around him, um, everybody that knew him. I mean, he enriched their lives, and he he would do anything for anybody. And, I mean, even if it was just like, hey, you want to go out to eat at Texas Roadhouse and, and talk about video games, you know? He was just an awesome dude. But uh, I, I knew right then and there, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't not pursue the podcast. I could not do it. I, the next day is not promised for anybody. I mean, that's so, that might be corny or cliche, but dude, it, it will, it will open your eyes when you lose someone that's close to you. It will, it will open your eyes that if you have a goal, if you have uh, a, a dream, you, you might as well do it and just do it now because tomorrow's not guaranteed. Next week's not guaranteed uh, for anybody. So yeah. And, and that's, that's God's honest truth. That was a true story. Uh, and, and that's what got me motivated. That's what finally motivated me to to do the podcast. So, uh huh, baby, yeah, I played our last show um, at the Little Heart Records anniversary show, and uh, the next day, 
you know, that was it for me. I, I basically uh, packed my drums up in their cases and I became a podcaster. And not to say that I won't ever play drums again, but I'm focused very heavily on this uh, uh, goal of podcasting, uh, obviously. Um, but then, yeah, just uh, the next day, a couple days later, uh, whatever the case may be, I, I, I recorded the very first episode, episode one, uh, with Clay Nevels of Foxbat. Uh, went over to his house and uh, laid down the interview. And once I had it recorded, um, I didn't know what to do with it then. You know, to be honest with you, I, I didn't know where to go from there. Um, so it kind of sat unedited. Um, but I showed some some people it. And I, I was looking for some feedback to make sure that what I was doing was right, that it sounded good, that it sounded professional, that it that it could be something. And so um had some close friends listen to it, had some family listen to it. And when they said, man, you know, that was really enjoyable. That sounded really professional. I, you should... You know, they kind of gave me the thumbs up or gave me the, give me the green light as uh, well, I guess that's flow rider. I don't know. It was on wrestling. That's the only reason why I know. It. Uh, anyway, so once they gave me the green light, I was ready to go. Damn, that's the next lyric. Um, but I knew that, yeah, then, you know, once, once I kind of got their blessing or kind of got their approval that, you know, I had something. So episode one came about and then uh, I did episode two with Joe. And then it just continued from there. Johnny, I got K-Day. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the origin, the history, the backstory. Uh, and that was kind of like my year in review. So uh, hopefully you guys made it through it. Hopefully you guys are still here. Damn. <laughs> I, but yeah, um, so that brings me to my 31st birthday. Um, and I feel like at this point, I should kind of let you guys know you know, about my goals um, for the podcast. I don't think I ever sat down and, and really, uh, really mentioned it uh, before on the show. Not too, not in any great detail, but I feel like if you want something, and Zach Pennington said this, you know, if you, if you have an idea, just tell everybody about it. Or if you have a goal, just tell everybody about it. And uh, hopefully people will help you get there. Um, so that's what I'm doing, you know. Doing this podcast, my goal is ultimately I want it to be successful, and of course, there's a million different levels of success and definitions of success and what, what that is. And uh, success is different things to different people. But ultimately, for me, my first kind of stop in, 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 in success uh, or my first kind of tier of success is I want to be able to, um, to garner enough listeners, enough downloads per month, listeners per month or per episode where I can get sponsors, get a sponsorship. Um, I have a great sponsor in Audiophile Inc. Um, for my for my screen printing and stuff. Man, they took a chance on me, and I mean, I'm still not anybody. But back whenever I wasn't getting hardly any listens at all, um, they were like the first people to really believe in me. And and Shane's awesome, awesome dude. But you know, to to garner big sponsorships, you got to have, you know, you got to average about five six thousand. I would say at least listens per episode if you do it weekly, about twenty thousand downloads per month, basically, uh, or listens to your episodes per month. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm just not there yet. Um, but that goal is, is is my first goal. Okay, so goal number one is I want to be able to attain that twenty thousand listens per month. I know that that's obtainable because I've got you guys. I mean, you're listening right now. I mean, you've already listened to, you know, 30 plus minutes of me talk about myself. Um, so, like, you guys are you guys are dedicated. <laughs> you guys are 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 a great group uh, of people. So, I know that through you guys, um, we can kind of grassroots this thing. You know, if we can word of mouth, uh, tell people. Uh, about the show if you do like it you know you can always share the links or subscribe uh i got a youtube channel now i don't know how many people honestly listen to podcasts on youtube but hey it's out there it's another platform you can subscribe on youtube thumbs up thumbs down comment whatever that's great put some traction there um you can support by you know telling a friend or sharing the facebook page Really, the great the the biggest way to support and to kind of help me garner and gain some visibility 
is by doing a five star rating or doing a review uh, on iTunes, preferably both. But you know, whatever you can do. I mean, I'm a I'm a person too. I'm a hardworking consumer, and I know a lot of times my time and is uh is valuable. So I'm not going to ask you to sit down and 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 uh, and take up too much time. But you know, a five star rating or what I like to call the five meow meow beans rating. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, click the five stars. Uh, you can write a review. I mean, even if it's just like, hey, great show. I mean, that works for me. Um, but the reason why that's so important in a nutshell is your sponsorships, your advertisers and things like that. They're, they're looking for shows that have a lot of listeners. With these reviews and with these ratings, it makes your visibility bigger on iTunes. Kind of what I mean by that is like, you know, if you want to get to like, say the front page or the featured podcast, um, on, on iTunes, you got to have the the feedback, the rates, the reviews, you know, somebody that might have a thousand five star reviews, they're going to be on the front page where someone that doesn't have any might be filed away on, on page 300. I don't, you know, I'm not necessarily sure how iTunes does it per se, but that, that is basically it. The ratings, the reviews, they garner the attention. They they garner the featured um, podcasts and stuff like that, which will get, which will of course gain more listeners uh, or more visibility anyway. And with that, sponsors and with sponsors, you make a little money um, doing what you love to do. Um, which brings me to goal number two. And goal number two is to have a sustainable income um, based only on podcasting. This was this kind of tier system, this goal system is basically the same thing that I had with the band. Uh, and I feel like it's a lot more obtainable. I maybe. Um, the thing is with the podcast, it's unless you're huge, it's very hard to kind of just take it on the road at this point, but you know, that's a goal of mine to be out there and to be able to treat it just like a, a show. You know, I want to be able to to go out and, and visit and do my podcast wherever, whenever, with whatever guests and you know, sell merchandise and sell tickets and all that good sort of thing. Um, but really just goal number two is to have sustainable income, something where I could pay, even if it's just a bill, you know, even if I can guarantee pay my, um, you know, electric bill every month, um, I would like to move it up to all my bills, including my rent and things like that. Um, but of course you got to crawl before you can walk and, but that's my goal also. Um, from there, having a sustainable income to do podcasting full time, my goal is to have five shows a week, five separate shows per week. Um, you know, Sean versus Wild being only one episode on the Sean versus Wild brand or whatever I would like to name the brand um, from there. But, uh, you know, Sean versus Wild being one show, me discussing a totally different topic with maybe a different co-host or a different format. Uh, but having that, you know, five days a week, um, being able to um, have five uniquely different programs, um, probably all with at least me on it. I don't know. Maybe I'll uh, look into having a network or or putting some other shows on my on my roster that don't include me. Maybe you guys would get tired of me. Uh, so maybe one day a week or a couple days a week, you can have one without me. But I mean, that's kind of the vision. That's the goal to have five unique podcasts per week, uh, five separate shows basically per week. Um, and have each one of those be a weekly show. So each Monday you get, you know, this theme each Tuesday, you'll get Sean versus wild Wednesday, et cetera, et cetera. You get it. You know, whatever. It's just like TV, you know, home improvements on every Wednesday, fresh prints on every Thursday, whatever. Uh, uh, I guess if it was like 1994. But yeah, um, or it's TBS. Damn, TBS is always hitting up that reruns of home improvement and uh, fresh prints. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's going to be, I mean, that's that's the goal. And then from there, I got my wildly important goal, my wig. We use that term a lot at work. Uh, it's from a book on goal setting and I don't know the name of the book nor would I know the name of the author. So if you do know about wig, wildly important goal, uh, just let me know in the comments section. 
<laughs> or uh, email me or whatever. Just get in touch with me. Let me know. Tweet me, bro. Uh, but anyway, my wildly important goal is just to, I want to, I want to be a name in podcasting. Uh, it doesn't have to be the biggest name, but you know, just as someone that listens to podcasts, when they hear Joe Rogan, they know Joe Rogan has a, a, a quality podcast, a successful podcast, uh, a podcast with a lot of followers. Uh, Mark Marin, the exact same way, you know, uh, Adam Carolla, uh, whatever, Chris Jericho, whoever, you know, when you hear those names, like they, they're pretty established in the podcast world. And, and that's kind of what I want to do. I mean, I don't have to be the biggest name, but I'd like to be a name, a contender, you know, hell, I don't even have to, I don't have to be on the Mount Rushmore podcast. I can be, you know, just put me in the encyclopedia podcast. How about that? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's ultimately the goal. Um, and to just take this thing and, and build a brand and, and hopefully be able to be successful at it and be able to help my friends that, that helped me along the way, you know, my family that's helped me along the way, uh, be able to give back to, to all of them and all you guys, you know? Uh, so yeah, those are all, those are all my, my big goals, I guess, going forward. Um, I know it's not all going to be done in a year or, you know, it's going to take many years. Um, and I try not to be impatient. I know it's a slow process. It's a slow burn, but you know, I'm always looking for a way to, to try to gain more attention, gain more, uh, I don't know, just some more traction, uh, uh, for the show. So if you guys have any good ideas or whatever, you know, like I said, hit me up at any time. That's another thing. It's a small goal, but that's something that I would like to, that I feel like we, I can definitely accomplish, you know, within the next few months, I'd like to get more feedback from you guys. You know, even if it's just a tweet that says hello, or if you have a question or you have a comment, or you have a guest that you want to see on the show, or you're a guest and you want to be on the show, uh, yeah, I just that kind of interaction. You know, I've got Twitter, I've got Facebook. You can Facebook message me uh, on Sean versus Wild if you're my you know friend. You can always personal personally message me, um, and we can just make that work. You know, um, yeah. So I, I appreciate all I appreciate all that you guys do uh, for me, and um, just love to hear from you guys. You know, honestly. And yeah, moving forward, that's, that's, that's all it is. But, you know, just like anything, it's a dream. It takes time. It takes money, uh, dedication, uh, from me. And, um, you know, hopefully I'm just hoping that it all come together, man. You know, it's nice when life works out that way. Uh, but I'm going to keep it going. I got a lot of cool things coming up, uh, too, just in the near future that, you know, I want to talk to you guys about. Of course, I've got shirts and koozies and stuff like that, um, on a side note, if you want to support the show, you can always purchase one. That's really my monetarily my favorite thing. I don't like to just ask for money for for no reason, but uh, I can hook you up with a shirt and a koozie. I mean, it's pretty cheap. I mean, my shirts are ten bucks. Uh, if you live out of state, you know, throw some shipping on that bitch, and uh, I'll get it out to you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, speaking of that, Mark the Shark, hope you enjoy your shirts out there in Moonwalker Land. But uh, anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, I got those shirts uh, currently. I have new shirts that are actually uh, going to be on their way uh, out to you as well. Um, be a look, be on the lookout for those here probably within the next month or so. So I've got some new shirts uh, and new merch and stuff that I that I have plans uh, f- uh, for. And then also here in the next couple weeks, some production starts on a new show. Um an additional show. Um, now I don't know necessarily know if it's going to be a part of this, um, Sean versus wild, uh, network or, 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 or brand, but it was, it will definitely showcase me as one of the hosts. Um, I'd love to have it under the umbrella of Sean versus wild, but we'll see how it goes. I can't really discuss too much about it. Um, at this point, and I don't know what will even become of it. You know, hopefully it's going to be something great. But here in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be starting uh, recording for uh, a separate show, a second show uh, for me anyway. Uh, and I think especially if you are a wrestling fan, <laughs> a professional wrestling fan, you're really going to enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, be on the lookout for that, too. And, you know, really, that's a, I'm just going to wrap it up from here. No reason for me to keep on babbling on or whatever. Um, really, I just wanted to close by saying that, you know, I thank you guys for taking a chance and, and listening, uh, to my show and, 
really, I, I just wanted to kind of say about podcasts in general and, and, and why I love them so much and why I think we all kind of like them so much. I don't want to make assumptions, but I just want to say I get a lot of uh, pleasure out of doing them. I get a lot of joy out of doing them, but I love listening to them. Um, I love listening to them wherever I am. Like if I'm at work, put it, you know, have one headphone in while I'm, while I'm working or if I'm at the gym, um, which I'm not at the gym as regularly as I should be. That's another goal <laughs> for the next year. Get in better shape, dude. You're not playing drums anymore, so you're just getting fatter. Got to take care of that. Um, but, yeah, you know, when you're at the gym, you can throw on a podcast. You're cutting the grass out here in the summer or something like that. Just put on a podcast. And and the best part about it to me is, um, especially I think what drew me to it is kind of the same thing that drew me to like certain music, you know. You feel like an outcast sometimes, maybe, not to get too real with you, but I, I've definitely felt like an outcast at some time or felt rejected as a kid or felt rejected from a girl or felt, um, you know, like I wasn't good enough or, you know, all that sort of thing or that I was weird or, or uh, that I was just different from other people. And, you know, kind of one of the things that I like about the podcast is like you, there's a podcast for everything that you're into. So if you're into, you know, anime or you're into books or you're into certain movies or you're into certain video games or you're you have this political bias or you have these social uh conscious you're socially conscious of these issues or that there is a podcast out there for you and when you realize that like you're just not alone you know you're not the only one that's ever thought about things that way or you're not the only one that loves certain things man that's where the magic really is for me, you know, like, Hey, I love to read Dune. Dune's one of my favorite books. Well, I can go and there's several podcasts out there talking about this, the Dune saga, the Dune series. I love that. You know, just like as you were a fan of anything, you know, I'm sure if it's like, man, I really love, um, you know, bad movies. There's a m bad movie podcast that I love out of this get made. Um, so that's what I love about it is like, you're not alone and you're not like, uh, different, uh, per se, you know, or in a bad way. Uh, there are like-minded people out there and there's a podcast out there for just about anybody. Um, and if there's not one, my advice, I guess less than what four of this, my advice is just start one. If there's not one out there, then you got the market on lock. So go out there and start one. Um, anybody can do it. And for an investment of about, 250 bucks. I was able to do it. You can do it for a lot less. Um, you just got to get out there and do it again. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So hopefully maybe this will influence some people to go out there and, and start their own. And if you don't start your own podcast, just go ahead and start living your dream at least whatever that dream may be. And then once you start living it and you're out there doing it, just uh, give me a call, and I'll put you on the Sean vs. Wild podcast. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. Thanks for allowing me to get wild.